Alrighty, how's it going, Wingspan? Uh, this is Tali, and I'm here to bring you a small tutorial on how to set up FIFA and get it working for your certain character. Um, now, I'm mainly making this tutorial because I notice a lot of uh, pilots in our corporation aren't 100% on fitting and aren't 100% on how to get it up and running and get FIFA ready to. Uh, ships for their character and yeah so figured I'd do a quick tutorial um, so uh, first step is getting PIFA uh, to do that we're gonna go to this website drag it over here it's gonna be github dot com slash dark x slash PIFA slash releases um, I'll be linking all this stuff in the description uh, and in the email that I send out for this um, now what I like to do is I like to have it not installed. I like to have it in a zip file because then I can extract it and then replace other files really quickly and find the actual install file really quickly so that when updates uh, come out we can just replace the old files with the new files. Um, okay, so uh, and they obviously have Mac and Linux versions as well if you're on those. Okay, so I'm just going to download this, open it, minimize this, and while that's Downloading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new folder, call it FIFA, enter. Da. Let's see, where did that, where did that go? Huh. My folder went somewhere. Oh. I already have some something FIFA on here. Now I'll rename it. All right. So once you grab the installation, you should see uh, you're gonna double click on PIFA, the actual folder itself, or you could just drag and drop it. But since I'm got a secondary installation, oh, I can uh, do this. It's gonna select all the files minus the top one two dots because that goes back. Drag it, drop it here. Finish its extracting. Alright. Once it's finished, you double click. It'll open up this. Scroll down. And then pifa.exe is the one you're looking for. What I did to make it easy is I just Click this, dragged and dropped it onto my uh, taskbar down here. You can see it's right here, but I gotta do it again. All right. Now, once you do that, once it's all ex uh, exported and uh, or extracted, excuse me, onto your desktop, and you double click on pifa.exe, it'll come up with this run prompt. Hit run, and then what that'll do is it'll open up the pifa fitting. Okay, switch to that. Oh, uh, I haven't updated to the la latest release. All right. So now that we're in PIFA, we're able to set up our character. And to do that, uh, you're going to get a window, character editor. As you can see, I've already imported two of my characters, but I'm going to import a third. Uh, we'll name this character whatever we happen. Uh, our character's name. I'll just call this test one. Create. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to API, and you have you're going to have to create an API and a verification code for uh, on your API Eve management. Um, and there's it's pretty straightforward, simple how to do that. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me. I'll show you how to do it. But um, once you have it all set up and created, you only need the uh, Character sheet is required, is the only thing. But I already have it created, so I'm going to go ahead and import that. Once you put your key ID and your verification code in, you're going to hit Get Characters. And it's going to say Invalid Key because I don't have one in there. And then what it's going to do is going to come down with the character on that account. It'll say it right here. And then you're going to hit Fetch Skills. And then once it has, once it says successfully fetched skills for X character name, whatever your character name happens to be, just hit OK on that. So, uh, once that's done, 
what will happen next is what you're going to do is you're going to open up a fitting. So, or I guess you're going to make a fitting. If you don't have any fittings in mind that you want to keep saved, um, what you can do is you can switch to Eve. See, I already have my Eve client open here. Switch to that. And what you can do is you can go to your fittings window, hit browse, uh, find a fitting that you want to do. So I'll use a, what do I have? Uh, what do I have? It's not in here yet. I'll do a hurricane fleet issue. Okay, so what I'll do is you can uh, hit copy to clipboard. And so what that'll do is it'll copy everything in the fit to your clipboard. Minimize that. Switch back to PIFA. And once you're back in PIFA, you can just hit Control V. And what that'll do is it'll import the fitting from Eve into your uh, into PIFA itself. And what that'll do is it'll allow you to use this little drop down box here on the right and select the character that you happen to want to fit this onto. And it'll change the fitting according to your skills. Now, um, if you've been using PIFA for a while and you need to update your skills, you can just hit Refresh API and it'll automatically fetch new skills. Um, and so yeah, that's how you get PIFA set up for your character and start getting your fittings going. If you'd like to create new fittings, you can just go to the Ships tab, go to Stealth Bombers, and then we'll say, say we want to make a Nemesis fit. Uh, we'll rename this one, call it Ohi. And then what we can do is we can change any modules we want. So what I just did there is I just right clicked on a module, hit Module Market Group, and what it'll do is it'll open up all the different market groups of that module. So say I want to change this limited 1mm micro warp drive to a upgraded 1mm, I can just uh, say I have this open. I can just right click module marker group, double click on the right side to remove it, double click on the left side to add it, and then easy as that. You can change. You can see the changes that um, a module gives. So you'll see, you know, this has this requires 25 CPU right here. Here's all the fittings. This is CPU. This is power grid. You see, this is requires 25. So we can see our CPU. We have 20165 left. We remove it with the limited. We have 20365 left. So we got two essentially. Then that's what the math indicates, and uh, it'll change according to. Uh, your CPU and power grid will change according to your skills. So if I put all level zero, it'll obviously go up quite a bit. Uh, if I change it back to mine, and then all level five. All right, um, that's how you switch out modules. You can left click to turn on and off a module to see cap usage. So right down here is gonna be your capacitor. It's gonna last 40 seconds with all these modules running. Uh, most of the time you can, you know, you can turn off that, you can turn off that, because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't take cap. But your warp disruptor, phase micro, phased weapon navigation, target painter, micro warp drive, with all of those on, you only get 40 seconds cap. With the MWD turned off, you get a minute 20. With the uh, one of the target painters turned off, it's 240. Both, um, once it's a stable 40%, it means you're not going to run out of cap. You can also see your um, <clears throat> rate of cap regen and your rate of usage right here. And that's how you see cap. Uh, some other information is if you want to overheat a module, you can right click. And what that'll do is it'll put these little flames by it. And you can see our che speed changing down here. So, like our speed with our 1mm micro warp drive is 1896 meters per second. We overheat it, it's going to be 2672 meters per second. Um, some other information uh, you can change damage types. I have all the different weapon damage types. Um, according to what percentage damage they do. So antimatter is 58% kinetic and 42% thermal. And you can see right here my EHP versus um, antimatter ammo is going to be 2.74k effective hit points. Uh, if I want to do, say, against my highest resist, which is kinetic, uh, I'll do Republic Fleet's say, or kinetic missiles is a good 
indicator, which is 100% kinetic, and it goes to 301, or 3.01, excuse me. Uh, some other information, here's your drone bay, how much it can hold, here's how much your megabits per second is, um, your DPS by weapons, by drones, how much you'll volley, um, and how much your DPS is. Now the difference between volley and DPS is very obvious when you're looking at something like the Stealth Bomber. Uh, if I can find a fit. Alright. So, your DPS is only 553, but your volley is 3351. And that's really important. So your DPS may be really low, but your DPS, but your volley can be very, very high. And that's exactly the case of the combat battle cruiser, the tornado, or the oracle. Um, with artilleries, more specifically. All right. Um, what well, some other information? Here's uh, ship price fittings total. I believe these are GTA prices. Be important. How many turret hard points things something has? How many missile hard points? Uh, the drones active. Uh, this will only change if you're ever fitting a carrier, but if you're not fitting a carrier, it's always going to be five, unless you're sitting fitting that really special guardian vexer, which I believe is an alliance tournament gift. And then here, up here, you can see your calibration for your rigs. So, you know, if I go here and I take off one of these rigs, it'll say go down. It starts at zero. So zero out of four hundred. If I put one of the one of each of these, it goes up to 300. If I put uh, two medium hybrid ambient extensions, sorry about that, my headset seemed to have cut out. Um, but if you put two burst aerators on here, it goes up to 400, etc., etc. Um, now to the right, right here, um, you'll see if it's uh, a skill book. If the skill book is green, it means you have all the fitting requirements of this ship. The skill book is red. It means you have you require certain skills to fit it. So if I go to this, I don't know. Uh, do I have any carrier black ops? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I go to this hawk fit, which I completely fit. Uh, actually, no, I can't. So you can see my skill book is red, and I need jury rigging four for the T2 small process processor overclocking unit, and rocket specialization one, and rockets five to fit this fitting. Um, so yeah, that's how you find out what kind of skills you need. And finally, let's see. Here's your HP per second um, repping. Me, uh, I have dual medium ancillary shield boosters on here. Um, you'll see with these loaded with the smallest charges, I'm getting 276 HP per second. Think of that as uh, DPS able to be tanked per second against this damage type. So this is thermal. This is my second lowest resist. If I change the ammo to antimatter, if somebody's shooting antimatter, I can tank up to 490 DPS per second. Um, cap or cap stable, obviously, um, until the charges ran out. Now you'll see if I remove one of the charges from here, my HP per second goes down. So this is burst. Um, tank HP per second. This is sustained. So this is over a period, over a long fight. Um, your HP per second is going to go down because uh, you're not going to be able to sustain uh, no cap booster. You're going to have to reload it. Uh, so that's that. This is armors per second. Same thing. Uh, Burst sustain, HP per second burst sustain, um, and this is just shield regen rate in general when you're sitting in space. One second. Alrighty, I'll probably cut that part out. Um, Let's see. I believe that's it. You can have all of your uh, equipment here. So ship equipment. Uh, we got it's set up just like uh, Eve, where it's got shields, scanning equipment, propulsion, hull and armor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Engineering is going to have your destabilized ramps, uh, cap boosters, um, rigs, 
implants, you can also change uh, and put implants in. So if I say my fit requires a CA1, CA2, and 3% CPU management implant, I can put those in there and it'll change these according to uh, their relative specs. Um, you can also add oops, you can also add boosters. Uh, so say I want to add a blue pill booster. Say a, say a standard blue pill. What that'll do is it'll increase my HP per second from 490 to 585 or 588. Uh, that's assuming I don't get side effects. Or as projected, if you want to right click in here, add system effects, uh, we can add a, um, I believe the wolf raid is the small weapon system damage increase. Yes. So if I want to roll, add a wolf raid effect class 6, my DPS goes from 179 to. 583, you can see the effects of your weapons while in uh, wormholes. You can uh, add a squad booster by going to your, uh, say, I have a command ship called Boosts. You go uh, to the actual fit. You don't click on the fitting, but you go to the fit itself. Right-click, set booster squad. And what that do, it will do is it will add it here. And what this does is if I change this to all zero, it will obviously say I don't. Uh, like it won't be able to fit any of the modules or turn them on, so I'll, I effectively have no boost right now. And you'll see what changes when if I go to all five. I can target fa uh, longer or farther. I can change the scan res, like it goes up by quite a, not quite a bit, but up. My line time goes down, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so on and so forth. Uh, my resists go up. I think this is an armor tank boosts, but oh well. You get the idea. Um, Drone, same thing. Uh, you can add drone DPS by going to cruise. Uh, let's find it. Let's say the Gila. Our strategy is perfect example. Um, you can see this is where you add drone DPS. So you'll see my drone DPS is 468 with geckos. You turn them off. Uh, your megabits per second will go down. If I want to put out five hammerheads. Uh, which is the max number of hammerheads I can put out. Uh, my DPS is 309. Warriors, same thing, 157. Hops, I mean, you get the idea. That's for the EC600s. Um, it won't. That's those aren't DPS drones, so it won't change your DPS at all. But they are uh, ECM drones. All right. What else? I think that's pretty much it. You can project um, different modules onto your fit so like say <clears throat> somebody is remote seboing you you can right click the actual module itself go project module onto fit and you can see when it's turned off my uh, scan resolution is 344 when it's turned on my scan resolution goes up to 4, uh, 457 if i put a scan resolution charge in it, it goes up to 571 so you can add uh, outside effects to your ship as well um, believe I covered everything. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email uh, at Tali Lyrae, Tali Space Lyrae. Uh, but other than that, I think that's it. Uh, if you want my damage pat uh, patterns, go ahead and again, shoot me an email and I'll send them to you. All right. Uh, actually, I'll probably just put them in the mail themselves. Cool. Uh, thank you guys very much and you guys have a good day.